It's the Happy Families Podcast. It's the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. Do you ever wonder why some movies have a G rating, some have a PG rating, others have an M or an MA? What do the ratings mean? Why do they always change? Why do they not seem very consistent? What is the deal with ratings and how can we use them to guide the decisions that we're making for our children? effectively and in healthy ways. Today, I'm joined by Professor Elizabeth Hansley on the Happy Families podcast. Professor Hansley is an adjunct professor in the School of Law at Western Sydney University. Elizabeth is the president of Children and Media Australia. It's a national NGO providing information and advocacy on children's needs and rights as media users. Liz has been on podcasts and TV shows and in conferences talking about screens and the lives of children and families. And I'm really excited for this conversation today. It's one of those things that really, really bothers me, Liz, the way that ratings are so inconsistent. They don't seem to be applied, even though we have them. And in some ways, it's kind of like, well, what's the point of ratings? Because with podcasts and with streaming, does any of this even matter anymore? The reason we're talking is there's an inquiry into Australia's national classification scheme being run by the Australian federal government. And that's what I want to talk to you about today, Liz. Thank you for being with me. What's the deal with ratings? Do they still matter? Well, it's a delight to be here, Justin. I'm really happy to talk to you. And I hope that what we say will be of use to your listeners. Is there any point to classifications? Well, look, we think there is a huge point to them, which is to provide information to parents. And, and others who make decisions on behalf of children as to what they the, what children should be seeing and not seeing. And there is great potential for classifications to be useful in that regard. The problem is that the system that we have at the moment really doesn't provide the kind of information that we need. It doesn't provide age-based information and it doesn't provide research-based information. So there's a lot of stuff in there that there's really no research to support And where there is research to support it, they tend to go off in the opposite direction or a different direction from where the research would lead. And that's what's great about these proposals that the government's looking at now because they really open up the possibility of having a greater impact from research evidence. And also, hopefully, we've got our fingers crossed, age-based classifications, which we know that would be really, really helpful to parents. I want to come back to both the age-based and the research-based classification elements shortly, but just just a quick anecdote. Recently, I sat down with a couple of my kids to watch a movie that was classified as PG, and I had to turn it off. I, I mean, it, it was it was explicit. It had content in there that was so coarse and degrading, and I, was, I just sat there and thought, what, what is going on here? I know that there's some research around this idea of ratings creep. That is, what was mm-hmm. once rated as, let's say, an R-rated movie has now moved back to being an M or an MA. Many M and MAs have been shifted back to being PGs now. Can you describe a bit about what ratings creep really is and the extent to which it's a problem? The problem here is that the criteria that we have are so subjective that the conclusions that people reach when they apply those criteria will change over time because people's values and standards change over time and and their experience might, you know, to use your word, coarsen them to certain elements that they might see. I've also heard quite a few people saying that what's suitable for a child or a group of children will depend on what that child or children have already seen. So it's like, oh, if they've seen this movie, then they'll be okay with that movie. And again, that implies that what we're interested in here is coarsening, that if if someone's been coarsened to something, then they'll be okay going forward. And that's not what the research says at all. Rather, it says it's more of a a dose-response relationship, and particularly if you think about something like violence, the more violent content a child is exposed to, the more likely that child is to become desensitised to violence, to develop attitudes that aren't as sort of concerned with violence as we would like children to be and so on. So there's a lot of difficulties with just the, the general beliefs and practices out there in the community, which again aren't based on research and that's why we would really like to bring it back to the research. Liz, one of the things that my kids are constantly hearing me say is just because your friends are allowed to watch it doesn't mean that you're allowed to watch it. Every family has different <laughs> standards. This inquiry that the government's having uh, and the submission that Children and Media Australia have made. Can you talk a bit about this age-based criteria that you're describing? And then we'll talk about the research-based as well. Yeah, we'd be delighted to see age-based classifications. At the moment, 
People are probably familiar with the idea of MA15+. plus. That's the only one we've got, though, right? 18+. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. yeah, well, we have 18, we have 15, but anybody under 15, we're just reliant on these very, very vague and broad and amorphous ideas of G, P, G and M. And listeners might not be aware, but M is different from MA15+, plus, and it's not legally restricted. So anybody can legally watch M-rated content, and that includes some quite violent superhero content, for example, um, and it also might include some rom-coms that might have some sexual content that some people might feel uncomfortable with, but others not so much. And so that's why we really need to know more about the the actual content of the uh, of the films and so on that are out there. And remember, we're talking about games as well and apps and um, other sorts of content are subject to this classification. You've just raised something for me as well. I mean, the, the, the games we'll come back to, but why don't we have ratings on books? I'm always astounded that there there are no ratings on books. Even the theatre, if you're going to go and see a play, no ratings. What's what's the deal with this? I, I just don't quite get how these things have slipped through the cracks. Well, yeah, it's just that different legal schemes grow up in different places for different purposes and they you know, don't end up being comprehensive. Hmm. But uh, we do actually have classifications for written publications. It's just they don't try to be as comprehensive as for films and there are some things that are sort of submittable for classification which would basically be you know porno mags just to right put too fine a point on it so if things have fairly strong sexual content then they would be submittable and there's a couple of different levels of uh, classification depending uh, just how much detail they show let's talk about how this would work though i mean if you're going to have an age-based classification scheme Mm -hmm. how do you determine from a developmental perspective whether a child can or cannot watch that superhero movie i mean i know plenty of people Mm -hmm. who are really fine with their five and six-year-olds watching them and in our home our kids don't tend to watch them until they're in their adolescent years Mm -hmm. it's it's a big discrepancy yeah exactly superhero movies are an interesting example because they're often heavily promoted to very young children well before the classification is known. Not just the movie, but the merch, right? I mean, the kids get all the merch before the movie comes out. That's what I mean. I mean the merch. The merch comes out long before and it's clearly merch that is aimed at young children. Absolutely. Size four pyjamas, little backpacks, little pencil cases, all that sort of stuff. We've all seen it. And um, that really undermines the classification message when it comes out. So by the time you find out that it's M-rated and therefore not recommended for anybody under 15, it's too late and the the die is cast. Every four-year-old's going to see it because that expectation's been raised and it's just too much to ask of parents that they resist that and there's no legal compulsion on them to do so. But to come back to your uh, original question, the government is proposing to put in place a panel uh, which has people on it who have research in different disciplines, be it psychology, education, paediatrics. We'd hope there'd be some um, paediatric nurses on there because they know a real lot about child development. And then they would look at all of the research and try to get some sort of sense of what's suitable for a five-year-old, a nine-year-old, 13-year-old and so on and have the classifications accordingly. Most of these classifications we would hope would still be advisory. So if you've got a particularly mature five-year-old, then maybe they could see something a bit higher. That's up to you. But you've got all the information uh, to make that decision. And also if a child's especially sensitive, then you might not show them something that would otherwise be okay for their age group. But we do think that there are some things, you know, just as with um, the kind of content where we have the cutoff of 18 and 15, uh, we think it would be justifiable to have a cutoff of 12 for some content where um, where parents just are, you know told very strongly you know your child should not be seeing this and use the legal system to do so yeah so that's the age based and i guess the research would inform that age based system classification system that you're yeah. discussing uh, Liz, something that's been on my mind a lot lately uh, with the introduction of Kyle Sandlands and Jackie O into Melbourne Radio, uh, the the growth in uh, the listenership that they have, I'm, I'm astonished at the content that is being played at 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock in the morning when parents are doing school runs with their kids. I know that there's codes of practice around this, but it seems like to some 
degree, much of the world has just stopped caring about explicit content, content that is genuinely not for kids. I mean, I mean, I might even argue that it's not really for some adults as well. But regardless of that, uh, my question isn't so much about Kyle and Jackie O as much as I think that the the degrading way that they present is definitely affecting our kids in in unhelpful ways. Rather, the question is, what do you think typical mums and dads are focused on now when it comes to their children's exposure to various forms of content? Is it the same today in 2024 as it was back in the 1980s when I was a kid growing up and mum and dad would say, absolutely, no, you're not watching that M-rated movie because you're a, you're a kid, you're 10 years old. Mm. What, what are you seeing in Children and Media Australia in terms of responses from parents on topics like this? Well, the the kinds of parents who get in touch with us are the parents who care a real lot and yeah. they're very concerned about what their children uh, are seeing and hearing and playing and they really seek out our help uh, in not just giving them advice as to what they should be doing in their own home but in supporting the, the broader reforms that, that we advocate for. Uh, but I don't know if there is such a thing as a typical parent really because you know that, that's that group of parents but then there are other parents who, you know, want their children to have as broad an experience as possible. And uh, as I was saying before, parents who think, oh, well, they've already seen this, so that should that means they should be okay to see that. They have that sort of logic to what they do. Parents do all different sorts of things, but I think ultimately all parents, with maybe a very few very minor exceptions, want their children to grow up healthy and happy. Yeah, and, and, I'm, and they, I'm convinced that right. having a healthy classification system has got to be part of that so that we can oh, yeah. make sure that our kids aren't seeing content that's not developmentally yeah. appropriate, that, that exposes them yeah. to things they're not ready for. Yeah, that's right. And, and we want to make it usable for parents, and I think that's part of the problem at the moment. A lot of parents have sort of checked out of the system yeah. because it's not usable, because it doesn't provide the kind of information that they want. We would like to see a lot, and we would expect to see a lot more parents relying on a very well-designed system that provides the information they need. Okay, Liz, the uh, classification inquiry is ongoing into this uh, into this scheme that currently exists and how it can be improved. But if I'm a parent today who wants help, I mean, personally, as, as you know, I've been a long time uh, follower and supporter of, of what you do at Children Media Australia. But if I'm just hearing this conversation for the first time, where do I go? What do I do to help my children to minimize the risk that they're going to be exposed to content that's not for them in movies and games and other media? Well, Justin, thank you very much for the opportunity to plug Children and Media Australians Know Before You Go movie review service. If parents want that kind of information, all they have to do is go to childrenandmedia.org.au and click on the movie reviews tab. And there you'll find reviews of every movie released in Australian cinemas since 2002. That's, that was rated G or PG and a number of M-rated ones that were promoted to children uh, and a selection of other movies that might be older but are available on streaming services. Uh, and we also review apps. So you can go there and get information that is from a child development perspective. It's written by somebody with child development expertise and that is age-based and it gives recommendations for different age groups of children. Now, you don't have to do or not do or to follow the recommendations but there's lots of information there one thing that I did with my own daughter when she was younger was she wanted to see a particular movie and I wasn't sure if it was going to be right for her and we sat down and read the review together and based on what was in the review you know, I think she was probably about 11 or 12 at the time and that's often a tricky age when you know, kids really want to watch quite adult stuff and you're really a bit nervous about what it's going to do. Anyway, we read uh, the review together and she thought based on it, no, I, I still want to see it. And so I went along with her and we talked about it afterwards. And she said, well, I'm really glad I read the review before because it would have been really, really scary if I hadn't known how the movie works out. And so she enjoyed the movie and she got a lot out of it. But uh, she wasn't scared out of her wits, as she might have been if she hadn't read the reviews first. So that's one thing you can do with the reviews or just read it yourself and make up your own mind. It's entirely up to you. Yeah, like that. Forewarned is forearmed. Know before that's you go it. at Children and Media Australia. Professor Elizabeth Hansley is the president of Children and Media Australia. And it's been so great to talk to you about the challenges with ratings. Uh, I hope that the submission is well received and we see some changes to the national classification scheme. My goodness, we need it. Thank you so much, Liz, for your time. 
My pleasure to be with you, Justin. The Happy Families podcast is produced by Justin Rulon from Bridge Media. Craig Bruce is our executive producer. And for more information about making your family happy, we'd love for you to visit happyfamilies.com.au. We'll put some notes about Children and Media Australia in the show notes so that you can check out all the resources there as well. Oh, 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 oh,